Hi everybody, thanks for watching The Great Green Room. My name is Julia. Today we're going to be looking at The Lonely Giant, written and illustrated by Sophie Ambrose. This is Sophie Ambrose's first book and it follows the story of this giant who lives in a forest and he spends his days doing all the normal giant things, uprooting trees, chasing animals, throwing boulders, until he realizes that his forest is looking pretty sparse. In fact, his forest is gone. So he has to spend the remainder of the book trying to figure out a way to get his forest back so that he can enjoy it once more and then not uproot it anymore. It's a pretty good story if a little bit heavy-handed. What I really want to talk about are the illustrations which are pretty lackluster and for a while I was trying to figure out why and what I realized is that this book is a really good example of a problem that you see in a lot of children's picture books which is that the illustrations portray all of the words and only the words. So what do I mean by that? Basically, every single thing that is written gets illustrated and nothing else. So there's nothing extra to look at. There's nothing left to the imagination. And it's almost as if there's no point to having illustrations because you can just read it already and picture it in your head. When you compare it to something like, I'm thinking of the book South that I reviewed a few days ago, where there were so many extra interesting things in the background that you could look at, it just adds so much more to the story. Or when uh, I'm about to do a review of this book, Princess Cora and the Crocodile, which illustrates much less than the words portray, which leave a whole bunch up to the imagination. And when you when you either over illustrate or under illustrate, I know those aren't great words, but for lack of a better word, when you do either of those two things, it really makes for a better story than when you just illustrate the bare words and nothing else. I, I don't think this is a bad book. In fact, I would be interested in seeing what else Sophie Ambrose does in the future. However, I don't really think this is the sort of book I would want to check out again. It's definitely not the sort of book I would want to buy for my collection. I'm going to give The Lonely Giant by Sophie Ambrose a 3 out of 5 worth a look.